Hello, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Microsoft licensing uh, webinar from Ultima. Uh, these are our monthly catch-ups uh, where we review the latest Microsoft news and updates, uh, with always kind of particular focuses each month. Um, so thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Ian Jard. I'm one of the Microsoft licensing consultants here at Ultima. Uh, and I've been doing this role with Ultima for the for 12 years or so now. And what I do is I work with my customers and clients to make sure that they're aware and understand the latest Microsoft licensing news and changes and ultimately where those uh, potential risks or opportunities are. Uh, and that's what we're looking to cover in this, in this webinar today. You will see my contact details uh, at the bottom of the screen there. So do please feel free to contact me or, or similarly contact your Ultima account manager or your Ultima licensing specialist. We'll be kind of happy to help. Um, as always, these um, webinars are designed to introduce you at a high level to some of these subjects. So we will be looking at things such as Copilot and Microsoft Fabric. We'll be turning our attention to some of the Microsoft news and updates. Um, and uh, I will obviously kind of cover off some recent news in regards to we've got Inspire coming up. We've just seen the end of their financial year. But you may have a scenario where there's going to be a particular um, specific piece of knowledge to your organization that's going to mean this may or may not impact you in different ways. So I would say that this would be a good way for you to understand that high level uh, piece. Uh, but please do engage with us to, to understand potentially how your organization could be impacted. Um, and one of the first things I did want to talk about, obviously, we've just got through June. So we are now in Microsoft's new financial year. We do have Microsoft Inspire starting um, on the 18th of July, which I'll be going along to or, or tuning into and delivering updates from that as well. There has been a lot of kind of recent news from Microsoft, just because they're withholding some of that information. We feel some of those updates for Inspire, and I'll, I'll cover that off in a moment. You know, but also little things like we're waiting for Microsoft to release their new managed account list as well every year. They like to confirm who the named account teams are for those enterprise uh, level customers. So you will then for be able to engage them and work with them through various workshops, incentives, funding that is always not available for your organization, depending on the projects, new strategies or, or new um, uh, services that you're looking to deliver. That new managed account list is generally released around the 1st of September. Uh, all the pots are refilled, so we are kind of monitoring that closely. So please do speak to us if, if you're unsure about who that team is and making sure that you can engage with them as soon as those confirmations are made to leverage all of the incentives of, of working with a named account team. Uh, or similarly, Ultima can pick up the slack otherwise in regards to helping set up those workshops, those road wrapping sessions, access to those technical and, and strategic specialists, and making sure you're doing things in, in the smartest way. But I do digress, apologies. Um, and I wanted to again cover off a very hot topic, the hottest topic from Microsoft, which is which is Microsoft Copilot. Um, now, these slides are potentially covering some of the information that we covered in last month's webinar. So I do apologize for that, but I do also want to make sure that again, we're, we're just covering off some of those basics so it all makes coherent sense. And then I can add some of the new updates following uh, following where we are um, with, with the general high level introduction. So I know everyone knows potentially what, what Microsoft Copilot is, but this is uh, Microsoft's new business partner. They have an outright bought open AI. They have made significant contributions up, you know, upwards of $10 billion. And effectively, uh, Microsoft Copilot is, is the enterprise and the business version for ChatGPT. Um, and the idea being behind it is, as you can see per this slide, the idea that it unlocks that creativity, makes you more productive and, and certainly allows you to, to upskill um, just regarding the products. That, that individuals are using. The idea being that it removes a level of, of grunt work. Um, so it kind of looks to complete that first draft, if you will, uh, especially when you're considering uh, co-pilot in, in Outlook. Uh, it would allow you to effectively um, flag those important items and you could even set it to, like I say, kind of draft that, that first copy 
of that first email. Uh, we'd also be able to see it being used predominantly in, in other um, uh, applications such as Teams. You know, Copilot in Teams is going to be a very useful feature for, for many organizations in the fact that you can kind of join meetings late and have a summarization of some of the key decisions that have been made along the way, key decision points and, and who the owners are. So again, just making you that much more efficient, kind of bringing together all of these multiple sources um, would really, really help kind of summarizing and be efficient in the meetings. And simply even just doing that business chat piece, I think there's some consideration in regards to how you ask the questions, how you ask the prompts. Uh, and this is the fact that within Copilot, for sure, that, that chat history is going to be wiped clean each time. Um, so there's that whole data in the in the public space that, that can kind of be covered off. Well, there is rightly concerns or, or questions regarding what is made public, what is made private, and, and Copilot is absolutely all, all private, um, and the security around it uh, is is pretty extensive. It's why there is all of this this this, this training and testing at the moment. For example, you've also got Copilot within Excel, which again is just going to provide you with the extra level of insight into all of the various data sources that you have. I'll actually come on a little bit later in the webinar to discuss Power BI and, and Fabric, but certainly within Copilot Excel, it just helps break down all of that in data and you can really, um, you can kind of reformat it or create these visual charts to just help consume that in a much in a much more, uh, in a much cleverer way, in a much more efficient way. So then there's often the question in regards to how Copilot does work and something we've, we've spoken, I've mentioned kind of briefly, the fact that it does work with these large language modules, LLMs, and then the question is effectively called a prompt. So you ask it a, a question and it will hive all of the data that has available to it. Um, and then, Afterwards, after you then close that, that session, all that data is, is wiped clean. Um, so for example, if you were to ask it, you know, what color trousers am I wearing? You wouldn't be able to answer that, that question. But if you were to say, ah, today I'm wearing a, a blue shoot with a uh, pink tie and black shoes, uh, what color trousers am I wearing? It would be able to answer that question. But then if you were to shut that down, next time you bring up a new chat and ask a new prompt, uh, it it would still not be able, from the data that has available to it, in the fact that it's wiped clean, it would not be able to, to answer that question. So the idea being that ChatGPT is public, then Copilot is very much private. In regards to the release schedule, we know that it is still being tested. It's not in public review yet. Um, at the moment, it's out to about 600 organizations in the US. Lots and lots of testing, obviously, lots and lots of work in regards to the, um, uh, the, the privacy settings. So lots of private testing currently, um, lots of AI generated security that can potentially, you know, make, make sure it needs to be, it needs to be good moving forwards. Um, Microsoft haven't really confirmed when this public preview phase is going to end. I mentioned earlier, we do have Microsoft Inspire coming up later in the month. And we are almost expecting to see some announcements there. Ordinarily, once it's in that public preview phase, then it's just a short run to get the licensing and the pricing and eventually the uh, general availability confirmed. But it is in the private preview phase and they haven't announced that public preview phase. Maybe they will do that within Inspire, Inspire even. And you know, and similarly, in regards to how Copilot is licensed and what it would cost, we can, we've got some confirmation from Microsoft's side in regards to the licensing. We don't have confirmation on the actual price point yet. Like I say, usually the price point comes in between public preview and, and general availability. So I can make some, we can make some educated guesses, but it is all still speculation a little bit at this point. Certainly over the last four weeks, one thing Microsoft have confirmed is some of the licensing and that license position organizations need to find themselves in. Uh, to making sure that they are potentially going to be ready for uh, for Copilot and those qualifying licenses, those base licenses uh, are Microsoft 365 E3, Microsoft 365 E5, Microsoft Business Standard, 
and Microsoft Business Premium. Um, so there's some um, confirmation about what those what those base licenses are needed. And there will probably be different price points. What we are seeing there is the fact that the educational plans, the A3 and the A5, is not included currently. But what we know is that Microsoft 365 Copilot will be a paid add-on to those base subscription licenses. So if you only three user uh, or only five user, there will be an additional cost to effectively buy Copilot and, and does require still that, that base level of licensing. All estimations in, in price are just estimations at, at this stage, and I would expect I would expect around £15 per user per month if you Microsoft 365 E3. And I would suspect estimate around to £10, eight to ten pounds for E5 users. Obviously, this is not 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 confirmed at this stage. We know, you know, is a copilot is available in GitHub, and that's about fourteen pounds per user per month. But from the dev side, I, I don't necessarily know if there's going to be too much insight. Potentially, this is the start of what would be the next level up. Maybe what an E6 offering. But again, this is all speculation and you kind of think fabric maybe power bi and some of their other power platform pieces would need to come into any kind of new level so i would say that we will see copilot as a paid add-on i wouldn't be surprised if we see some updated news in the inspire i think it will be around 10 pounds if you have uh e5 and around 15 pounds if you have e3 but that's just what we're waiting to confirm there are some other readiness um uh, uh, actions that might be worthwhile for organizations to do. We mentioned about that base level of licensing and the fact that we're not even out of public preview yet. But as well as having that E3 or E5, we do need to make sure, even if you have that, those licenses, that you do have an, an active uh, Azure AD account, uh, or I should say Entra account, as Microsoft have changed the name of Azure Active Directory Premium, Plan 1, Plan 2, to, to enter ID, E-N-T-R-A. So hot off the press, not even on the slides, as your Active Directory Premium uh, is now going to be enter ID. Uh, you'd need to be at the current channel, a month enterprise channel for your M365 apps, you know, being able you know, unblocking web sockets from user endpoints, all of this is kind of crucial to enable that, that co-pilot experience. You need to enable plugins within Teams um, via the, the kind of the admin center that is going to be um, almost a prerequisite really and then there are going to be other things and do please speak to our professional services team we are looking into this in many ways the partner communities lead in the Microsoft community so we are highly recommending kind of aligning uh, network connectivity principles um, purely so you minimize latency you know absolutely get that best experience I think the whole co-pilot piece will continue to have updates and we'll continue to stay on top of it. Ultima will continue to drive this message. It's going to be a really, continues to be a really, really cool area and, and lots of developments coming. We'll continue to do newsletters and up, um, uh, you know, in, if there's something specific or something major has happened, we'll also do bullets as our, bullet points out as well on, on the blog, perhaps. Moving on to Teams Rooms. Um, their licensing policy and, for, and, and enforcement was due to be on the 1st of July. This has been shifted out now until the 30th of September. So this is basically for organizations who are potentially using a per user license for a room. You should really be using those device-based licenses. You have to be using those device-based licenses. Um, therefore, this is kind of a reminder more than new information. And Microsoft have kind of pushed that enforcement date back. I think many organizations are unsure about how to um, understand whether this is the case. So again, we run things such as health checks and optimization tools where we can just understand your full licensing estate, right? And understand if the licenses have been applied in the right place. You know, does this device, does this user, does this profile have the right level of product that they need, so on and so forth. But for this one, the Teams Room licensing policy, you have to, you're not allowed to use these per user licenses for rooms. This is gonna be enforced from the 30th of September. Um, again, there was, I think we will hear more about uh, Microsoft Fabric um, in Inspire, but it was announced uh, in May in, in Microsoft Build 2023. So what is it? 
Um, so Microsoft Fabric is this end-to-end -end, uh, unified analytics platform. Uh, the idea is that it brings together all of these various different data points, all of these various different analytical tools to combine and, and provide you now with a, with a single Microsoft Fabric. So kind of combining Power BI and Synapse and, and Data Factory and you know, and, and then we've got a single multi-cloud data lake and it's going to be called One Lake. So Microsoft Fabric is effectively built on, on One Lake. Um, and in fact, it is, therefore, you, every Microsoft Fabric customer would automatically have, in every one of those Fabric tenants, uh, One Lake. In much the same way, workloads are automatically wired into uh, OneDrive, you know, all your M365 apps. Uh, everything's effectively backed up in OneDrive, and it's the same concept with Fabric when, when it comes to uh, when it comes to One Lake. So all all workloads are automatically wired into One Lake. Um, so how is it going to be licensed? Um, there's a lot of similarities with the Power BI Premium uh, licensing piece, where effectively every and a lot of the terminology is the same as well, um, and there are some questions that that brings up, but, but for right here, right now, every organization is going to need to have like an organizational license and then at least one per user license as well. Um, it's, um, it is something where each subscription is broken down into the tenants or capabilities or workspaces. It is something which is available if you wanted to, to trial it as, as well. That is going to be, be possible and something that we can set you up with. Um, the licensing, as I said, when it comes to the organization licenses, you think, oh, well, as an organization, um, I need to be licensed, and you would generally do that via capacity. You might consider using Azure to, to therefore license it, but then you'd still need, when it comes to those individual licenses, it's probably, well, there will be two layers. There'll be the free layer, you know, the free individual licenses where you know, giving every user access to the public capacity, they can create and share content, but then you'd need the pro, the paid for license, if you wanted to um, actually, you wouldn't have access to the capacity and you needed to just, just, just create from scratch, uh, in some cases consume, but much more of a Power BI content. Now you'll notice that there is a bit of a conflict there when I was talking about licensing it per capacity and what is a free license elements of the free license allow you to create so at what point does that pro license become why would you buy the pro license if you get some of those features in the free so for this reason there is still some conflict with the licensing there but from your you know it's important to understand that you will be licensing on both a per user and a organizational level as well um, and um, Please contact us to, to learn more as we continue to learn more as well. Coming on to some of the other updates, some of the other Azure updates from July. One of the ones I wanted to talk about was uh, the Azure uh, reservation alerts, um, which is something that is re well is relatively new. So. Previously, you know, historically, administrators would need would be able to view utilization rates in the Azure management portal, um, and it was a proactive thing that they'd need to go and do. You know, you'd go and buy these reservations, you make these one or three year commitments, and then um, you utilize that for a project. But then people may move on, projects may move on, and you, maybe within the organization, you're not aware six months down the line that you do still have some of these reserve reservations available. So. The Azure reservation alert reservation alerts effectively means that there is a new feature. So effectively, the, these admins um, would effectively be sent an email when a reservation starts to exhibit low utilization. So if someone's not using something, um, you'll be proactively advised that you have this feature, and then you can you can jump on it. Uh, another big one is going to be Azure standard support within like an MCA, a Microsoft Customer Agreement, or an EA, an Enterprise Agreement. You need to be able to, well, Microsoft effectively offer you 12 months worth of uh, free support. For that first year, if you were kind of signing up prior to the 1st of July 2023, you get one year's worth of, of Azure support. Now, Microsoft have extended this. Um, 
and now it's been extended until the 31st of December. That again, you will get one year's worth of free support. Now, obviously, MCA agreements can last for much more than a year, enterprise agreement, three years. So the question does become, what are you going to do about the support in, in the subsequent years? But but for now, and again, that's something Ultima can and do help many organizations with. You may have other partners, you may speak to Microsoft directly, you may want to have a unified support type contract. There are other solutions, uh, and we're happy to talk and expand them out. I mentioned previously, every organization is going to have their own unique scenario. What I'm saying is, is that previously on the uh, EA MCA side, you would get that first year for free with support. That was due to end on the 1st of July. It has now been extended until the 31st of December. And then the other major piece, which is good to know and not forget, is that there is a price increase due on the 1st of September for the on premise licenses. So this is aligned to Microsoft saying, well, they did the price increase in. Uh, in, in March on the cloud side, in regards to that global harmonization, you should be able to buy their cloud products cheaper outside the US. And now they're very much doing the same with their on-premise licensing SQL, Windows Server. They've not confirmed what the prices will increase to. Uh, maybe we're expecting four to five percent. Um, therefore, if you are aware about an on-premise requirement, or if you're thinking we need to do an on-client uh, compliance piece, discovery piece, we can help with that, but if you've got that information already, it's certainly encouraged to look at that before the 1st of September. Microsoft have announced that they will be reviewing their pricing on a six month cadence, kind of aligning it to the US price list, saying, look, this is, this is a global issue where the US price list needs to be the cheapest. And if individual territories, if the currency fluctuations and volatility continue, Microsoft are now reserving the right. You know, previously they did do it at the start of their new FY and that that will be fixed for the next 12 months. They basically said starting from the 1st of September, they are going to be reviewing it on a six month basis and we are expecting a price increase. So there will be a price increase of on-premise products in September. Please contact us to understand what your area of risk would be around that. Um, please register for the next uh, webinars, they are available. I would absolutely uh, welcome um, anyone saying any particular subjects or uh, areas that they would like to focus on or hear about the following month. A little, little light this month, I think there's going to be a load more announcements from Inspire. We will continue to monitor things like Copilot and, and Fabric and keep you up to date and informed. It's a really, really interesting uh, area. So um, it's certainly something I'm, I'm spending a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of time talking about and discussing. So um, please let me know if you would... Uh, like to have those separate conversations as well. I mean, I've barely even mentioned things like the Azure AI Studio, uh, which again is all built around AI safety and kind of built into that whole tool chain. But we can we can kind of cover off all of those elements. And similarly, we've got a very uh, uh, looking to establish some very interesting professional services. If you need uh, help from a readiness perspective, from an education, from a security perspective. Uh, or just simply you'd like to learn how that deployment could look to you. We'd like to take you through uh, what that process would look like from Ultima. But please do let me know if you have any questions or requests. The details are on the screen there. Um, but I do thank you for your time. Um, and I will see you again next month. Bye for now.